was the week before Christmas, and in every listener's house. Joey and I will enter, while you're sleeping, unannounced. We'll be looking for your stockings, not stealing, we swear. Like Saint Nick in a ski mask, and covered in cat hair. Yes, we've come bearing stories to influence your head. To fuck with your dreams while you sleep in your bed. They're guaranteed weird, the strangest, in fact. Tales of Humanoid Encounters, this week on Black Cat. I didn't see you there. Something big is going on here. From hunting ghosts to Bigfoot. Paranormal, UFOs, true crime, and more. We won't just be spouting articles. I was researching for your entertainment. The beginning of a new world. <laughs> the best guac you'll ever fucking eat. True story. It's basically like one day you walk outside and you see that the ants are playing with matches. This, this is, is the Black, Black Cat, Cat Report. Report. See you on the other side. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 76 of the Black Cat Report. My name is Allegedly Gil, and I'm here, allegedly, with Joey. Alleged Joey is here, yes. Joey, how are you doing tonight? Oh, you know, awesome, ready for some stories. Fuck yes, I've been really excited about this one, you know, like, leading up to, uh, well, Christmas, because we're a week away, wanted to do something where we weren't taking ourselves too seriously. There's enough shit going on. There's enough weight on everybody's shoulders, enough stress going around, right? Yeah, yeah. And so I thought to myself, I'm like, well, you know, what's more traditional than that same bowl of Christmas candy that we dust off and set out every year? right? The one filled with stale candy canes, discount cherry Hershey kisses, you know, the ones that we try to like basically set out and hope that somebody takes home with them, but nobody ever does. You try to pawn, you try to pawn them off on other people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's right. And that's why this week, what I decided to do in dedication to Christmas candies, right, is Mm -hmm. I went up, dusted off the shelves, and I rifled through the BCR library looking for tales and accounts so unbelievable you won't believe them literally nobody should believe them but these are the stories passed down through generations kind of like that rainbow candy you inherited from your grandma who's still alive it's it's the ones that are stuck to the bowl and the giant clump that literally when you try to eat them you realize you're picking the entire bowl up with them it's those stories and i know what you're saying you're probably saying to yourself why the hell would you do that Well, because they're funny, and they're old, and they're weird, and someday, our stories will also be old-timey and ancient, too. So, I propose, this week, in the lead-up to Christmas, we sit back, de-stress, and learn some history we can bring up to repel those people that we run into in our old hometowns that we're trying to avoid from high school. I can picture the people right now that I'm (laughs) going to use these on. So, I, I like to think I justified doing this in that like everybody just pictured those people and they're like shit i do need to de-stress and so that's what we're doing now i'm actually referencing a single book from a collection of 16s it's a 16 volume set that is absolutely fascinating i had to dig through and pry for these weird bad stories because the book is filled with so many great references um it's called humanoid encounters 1 ad to 1899 the others among us by albert s rosales it's also available on Kindle if you don't like paperback. And like I said, it's part one of a 16-volume collection. Links will be in the show notes. It's a fascinating series. I bought the entire series, so I didn't buy 16 volumes of bad stories, just to let you know. <laughs> I mean, he likes to tell himself that, but to be fair, I don't think he did. We'll see, I guess. Okay, maybe I'm passing along my like library version of the hard candy to everybody else right now. I'm, I'm just trying to give you that bowl. But hey, it's a theme, so. Yeah, true. Our first story brings us to Constantinople in the year 438 AD. The city is being leveled by a series of historic earthquakes with no end in sight. Citizens, they began fleeing their homes, leaving the capital abandoned as they ran for the safety of the nearby countryside. Soon, the crowds of refugees gathered and with nothing else left to do but hope, they started to pray. The scene was absolutely brutal bishops leading the people's words, everyone just begging the heavens to make the earth finally rest as the walls and towers of the city 
of this massive, essentially modern metropolis were crumbling in front of them. It was during these prayers, during these shakings and tremors and terror that were going on that everyone would stand witness to an event later deemed an official miracle by the Christian church. While this apocalyptic scene was still playing out, a young boy was suddenly, quote, taken up by a strong force so high into the air that they lost sight of him. This wasn't like some kind of slow Peter Pan learning to fly cutesy moment. This kid straight up yeeted into the heavens, like just in <laughs> front of everyone. He's like, woo! <laughs> just like, shut up. Now, yeah. do you know how long that shit would take even going fast to fly straight up until you're not even a speck in the sky? Like, long enough, everyone there would A, definitely see him, but B, also start to get intrusive thoughts and start thinking that, I don't know, maybe they missed their ride on the rapture bus. Oh, for sure. You know? <laughs> like you're sitting here you're literally watching an apocalyptic situation and then somebody meeting the exact same quote from the bible which i pulled up here um those who are alive and remain unto the coming of the lord shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the lord in the air basically all the folks 100 percent good with god dead or alive will be sucked up into the sky with god while all the folks who you know, maybe had shellfish once or wore clothes with mixed fiber blends, they would be left to face the complete chaos of the end times with the movie's climax being the final battle. So just picture this. You're there, you're watching this fucking apocalyptic situation, and somebody straight up gets raptured in front of you. One person out of tens of thousands of people just whip. <laughs> just like yeeted up into the sky. That would be about the normal ratio, I'd imagine, if they were someone who's getting raptured. It's just like, oh, one person that everyone's like, oh, <laughs> Yeah. Wow. That's probably about right. <laughs> but like, you know, some people were given like side stares and glances at like the bishops who were literally just leading them in prayer. Like, yo, what the? F <laughs> what? Yeah. Bishops just like, meh. Shit. Meh. <laughs> Shouldn't have lied on my taxes. I liked him. <laughs> the bishop's like, I like that kid. You know, I always said he's going places. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, so so everyone's standing there, earth shaking and clouds of dust bellowing out from the city of the tens of thousands of people just all just standing there. And only one boy gets a gold star from God and gets whoop, sent up. Mm -hmm. Well, as the shock of what everyone saw settled, people started rushing over to the site of, you know, this epic trampoline double jump. Right. And like the champion. Yeah, the the champion. We all did this. We all sent our friends over the safety nets. I I had an instance that luckily I've healed from where I came down on the poles in the middle. Oh yeah, that's the worst part. <laughs> and then I fell over the other edge. I'm going well, <laughs> well, I hope I've you're, healed I'm up glad from you're that. okay. I'm glad am, you're okay. Yeah. I am good. I am But unfortunately, you didn't totally get it into the the heavens <laughs> at this <Wing>! point. <laughs> No. But yeah, so like this just happened. Thousands of people saw it, obviously. Um, it? And just like what people always do, say when there's a car accident or something happens, it takes place and everybody rushes in and they're a bystander, mm -hmm. right? So all these people are rushing over to where they just saw somebody fly up in the sky and they're like, what the fuck is going on? Did you see what happened? You know, I thought I saw this. Mm -hmm. So everybody's there. And when I mean everybody, I mean like literally we've got religious officials and royalty, including the fucking emperor, are all standing there scratching their heads, which uh -huh. made what happened next even more well documented. Huh. That boy who just reverse bungeed up to God was suddenly shot back down to earth. He got rejected, I guess. Not quite, right? So like he got shot back down, but he didn't come back empty handed like, uh -huh. like any kid would. He was super fucking stoked when he got back and there was thousands of people staring at him and they were all like, what the fuck happened? What did you see? What's going on? Well, with everyone around him, and I actually do mean this time, literally everyone around him, he said that he, quote, had just attended a great concert of the angels hailing the Lord in their canticles, which I had to look up. A canticle is a type of psalm song. Uh. Anyways, Basically, they were just rocking out and singing. So he basically <laughs> went up there and he was like, I freaking saw Freddie Mercury, <laughs> Elton John, even though Elton John's still alive. They're not even alive yet, but I saw them and they're really good. They're not even dead. Yeah. They're not even dead at this moment. They're so good. 
they were they were singing their songs, man. Bohemian Rhapsody, Constantinople Rhapsody. Oh my god, <laughs> Istanbul or Constantinople? Or Sistan- <laughs> yeah, but yeah. So this sounds absolutely ridiculous, but yeah. Keep in mind, they were facing unholy levels of drum and bass. Like that's actually what was happening at the time. So yeah. I do believe there was an epic concert going on up in heaven, and. I think it's, it's really interesting concert. too. Yeah, it was an EDM <laughs> concert. You know, it was a uh, electric forest up in Michigan or something, right? But mm-hmm. this is also fascinating to me for another reason. So we're looking at 538 AD. Like when you actually look back at the timeline of angel and like human interactions, like mm-hmm. angels weren't exactly the best neighbors to humans for a really, really, really long time. Yeah. Basically, until John Travolta changed the whole fucking thing in the 90s with that movie, I forgot. But, like... Michael? Was it Michael? Yes. <laughs> yes, <laughs> okay. I don't I don't know if I watched it. I just it saw took, the, the box of it. It took Michael changing the whole damn thing. Yes. Yeah, so, like, they didn't start off on a good foot. Like, do you know... And I want to throw this in there, too. But, like, the, the whole history behind, like, Lucifer, right? Like, God made man and said basically these are my chosen people i'm gonna give them free will they Uh don't have to worship me or they can totally would like it if they did but i ain't gonna force anything might flood a few places and burn some people and do some other shit but it's a little pretty fair though it's pennies it's pennies so lucifer is all like what the fuck you made us and we have to worship you but now you're making these folks and now you're telling us to basically be the managers of a planet full of karens I ain't down with that, bro. Then he tried to launch a rebellion, and then it didn't work out. And then God was like, hey, whoever the fuck was already down here, you're getting the fuck out. I'm putting this kid in. Still love you, son. Peace. Put him down there to rule over hell. So, yeah. Well, at least he, you know, at least he, he, he probably just wanted to be alone, to be fair. He's just like, fuck all these people. <laughs> He's like, honestly, I just wanted a weekend. <laughs> I just wanted a weekend, and he gave me an eternity. <laughs> I just really like red. <laughs> I really like yeah. red. He won't let me wear it. I don't understand. Like, yeah, Eve gets to wear red. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I guess so. So here's here's where the shit gets a little bit wild in terms of like the legitimacy of this event, right? So I did mention that it became a, a sanctioned like miracle. Uh-huh. The details of the event were so meticulously documented, and the memory of it has been so just preserved over time that. Uh-huh. Pretty soon afterwards, um, <laughs> Greek scholars came in, right? So, like, uh, Greek Orthodox Christians came in, documented mm-hmm. the whole fucking thing, right? Um, <laughs> tens of thousands of witnesses. <laughs> so, like, keep that in mind. You actually easy do have to, a easy lot to, ask to play. people. Yeah. The fucking emperor was there. Nobody's yeah. saying don't talk about it, you know? Theodosius II. <laughs> that guy. Uh-huh. Well, after it got documented, it eventually became a thing in Greek churches that every year, this early documentation, the actual documentation, would be recited to the public as part of the Ecclesiastical Annals, a history of the Christian churches the first 12 centuries. So, like, this has been repeated every single year, pretty much within a handful of years after it happening, to the public. From the original documentation. Wait, since so they've four, been just since eating kids up into the... Every yeah. year they go to this place and they As just eat tradition. a kid into the Ding. heaven. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I would mean, have I would have volunteered if I was around. I'm mean, like, fuck yeah. <laughs> Does it say how old the kid is? You know this... Oh my God, I just realized that like the Red Bull, like uh, what the fuck is that called? The flying contest the f- where everybody runs yeah. and jumps off the thing. Red Bull gives you wings contest or whatever. They're Greek Orthodox. I didn't know that. That makes they, sense. They Holy literally sh- just disguised it. Holy <laughs> shit. Just, uh, <laughs> God damn it. G- Red Bull gives you wings us. to heaven. Um, yep. <laughs> Yeet. You're gone. So that shit's fucking wild. That shit's fascinating. Obviously, it touches on some folks' like, deeply held religious beliefs. Not trying to knock that, but I am just saying it's just as believable as pretty much everything else that falls into other people's practices and religious beliefs. Why mm-hmm. the hell else would you be worshiping something that's just like, hey, my name's Stan. I just uh, lived an average life, died at an average age, and you know, I was a little overweight, but never too much. And you know, like nobody, nobody's like, fuck yeah, Stan. You know, like that's not a thing. We worship these these um, paranormal events in history. That's what all these miracles and shit are. So yeah, with that in mind, I gotta ask you, Joey, angels or aliens? What the fuck happened there? Huh? Putting you on the spot. 
Can we mix the two? Ooh. Angelian, Angians? I don't know. I didn't plan for this, but I'll allow it. What what are you what are you thinking? I don't know. I like it's it's interesting just to read text because a lot of stuff is written in metaphors, too. So I don't know. It could have been a metaphor of like This was pretty literal. <laughs> this yeah, was I mean this was very universally understood as literal at the time. <laughs> I to be fair don't even know. Like this is just it's a lot to take in at the moment because yeah. like <laughs> you're like, holy just, shit. Appears and disappears randomly, or appear r- disappears and then. You guys, I went to a concert. Yeah, yeah, and then just says, "I've been to a concert," and they're like, "We didn't even. We're so poor, we haven't even taken him to a concert. He doesn't know what a concert is. We've been <laughs> hiding music from him for years." Yeah, <laughs> and he was related to um, Mozart. Huh. Damn. So, so Ajalians is that is that what we're going I, with? Let's just go Aj- Ajalians. Ajalians. Yeah, let's go Ajalians. Part of the yeah. Ajalian agenda, if you ask me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, they they hang out usually on the other end of the ice wall. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. With the uh, uh, the talls. What was the the names of those Captain people? Captain Butler's Brewery. Captain Butler's Brewery. Captain. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's hanging out there now too. Yar, having a good time this <laughs> evening. Good, good. <laughs> Let me get that off the table, Gar. <laughs> um. Huh. <laughs> speaking of Captain Butler. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Can we not like? <laughs> Our next story brings us to the ice wall. <laughs> Our next story brings to light an early tale in an area of cryptids I honestly have just not looked at, and in doing so, completely missed the fact that there's an incredibly rich history which someday we will dedicate a show to. Mm-hmm. Our next story takes us to the year 558 AD in Belfast Lock, Northern Ireland. Nets in hand and motivated by frustration, a crew of fishermen set out to scour the cold waters of Belfast Lock in an attempt to hunt down the source of an unrelenting female voice singing from below the surface. Their hunt was a success, and soon they were bringing a live siren back to town. Holy shit. But that's not the weird part of the story. Oh, okay. Well, cool. Literally. <laughs> I mean, at this point when I was reading this, I'm like, every fucking mermaid story I've ever heard is like they see him over there, people get shipwrecked, it's just like a tail. Um, or it's they just disappear. some shit yeah. that's like, you know, frozen in a block of ice that nobody's allowed to actually melt and look at and check to see if it's like a bunch of animals glued together. Right. Mm-hmm. Like but it's never like, Hey, I got a live one and just like bringing it into town, right? Yeah. Well they always ask the question you always have to ask the question too, which is weirder if it's a mermaid with a with a human top and a, a fish bottom, or a fish <laughs> top and a human bottom. Yeah. I think I think history has intentionally ignored those, and there's a clear bias. I would imagine so. You know, Little Mermaid and everything with the human top and the fish we bottom. Know, yeah, the the bias always goes goes towards boobies. True. I mean, so did those uh you know those farmers that you were talking about earlier on air. But we can talk about that later. <laughs> yes. So, after she was brought into town, one of the first things the people decided to do, you want to guess? Uh, roaster? Mm-hmm. <laughs> For food? The opposite. Oh. They wanted to baptize her. Oh. And give her a new name, Mergin. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Probably not, but I did look it up, which translates to born of the sea, which sounds like getting a brown dog and naming it chocolate. I will admit that that was my first thought, where I was just like, you just got a mermaid, baptize it, which like it was already in water, and then you basically were just like, yeah, this is a generic name for you of the place that we took you from. Yeah. It's kind of weird. It's generic. Yeah, that's generic. And <laughs> it's like, generic. Uh, very... Got an orange cat named Garfield. They it's like, okay. They could have thought better. Easy. Yeah. Easy. Two, two, just low-hanging fruit. How many times does a town get to name the mermaids? You know, like a mermaid coming in. Like, how many opportunities do you get? They really should have went through a consensus process and not just went with, like, the loudest eight-year-old that yelled it out. But here's the thing. Apparently, at some point in this ordeal between uh, pulling her out with the net, bringing her in, taking her into town, and then the town deciding, you know what we should do? We should baptize a mermaid today. Doing that, huh. this mermaid actually told them tale of her life. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> Well, apparently at some point in this ordeal, Majern had told folks that when she was a child, she was human. But while she was growing up, a massive flood came, pulling her and her family into the sea. That's not how that works. 
<laughs> I don't <laughs> think that's how that works. <laughs> this is the part of the story where you say that's not how it works. Yeah, that's not how that works. <laughs> I To me, like I immediately had ancient alien vibes where it's just like, is this proof of mermaids? Was Majern trying to explain evolution to a town of religious fanatics by alluding to the biblical great flood? Does this mean Majern may be linked to our quest for Atlantis? Oh, God, yeah. They were looking for Atlantis. I mean, they probably didn't think about Atlantis. But yeah, the History Channel would be like, it's the proof we've all been looking for. <laughs> Just some... It's Atlantis. We're in the Galapagos Islands now, and we think we found evidence in Northern Ireland. We're probably yeah. like, what? <laughs> what in Northern fuck? Ireland, yeah. no. It's just Jason Momoa sitting on the beach, <laughs> drinking a beer. It's like, we found him, finally, Aquaman. Literally trying to like hide behind a plant at the hotel yeah, so the yeah, cameras yeah. get away from him. <laughs> yeah. Nevertheless, as we all know, Northern Ireland is well known for its incredible hospitality. This is true. Mm -hmm. I've met a lot of folks from Northern <laughs> Ireland, fucking awesome people. Couple of them owe me a surfing trip. Apparently, surfing's huge in Northern Ireland. You do need a wetsuit that is so thick you basically just walk around like a gingerbread cookie. But if that's how I die, that's how I fucking die. That shit sounds fucking nuts. I want to go. You're trying to look for a mermaid too. You're trying to snare a mermaid, aren't you? That's really what you're doing. <laughs> the kind with fish for tops. That's why the I'm fish for tops. <laughs> yes. Um, but... I really like fish. <laughs> but yeah, so they really like fish. <laughs> oh, really. <laughs> But yeah, so they're known for their incredible hospitality, and they by no means failed to show that to this mermaid with what they did next. So after baptizing her, after giving her a new name, uh -huh. the people of the town built her a large tank, which I'm thinking was basically just a giant barrel, right? A pool? A pool? <laughs> basically <laughs> a pool. They her pool. <laughs> Shit, I forgot what year we're on already. Um, I think it's like 530-something. Yeah, 558 AD. So like you- yep. You do, you would blow their mind if you went back in time and mentioned the word pool. They'd be like, "What? What sorcery is this? Yeah, yeah. Two O's yeah, yeah. next to each other." But <laughs> so so yeah. So after building her this large pool, um, <laughs> this is where it gets a little bit more strange. Majern apparently presided in this pool for some incredibly extended period of time. Mm -hmm. This is like over fifteen hundred years old, right? Yeah. So we don't actually have the exact dates in this situation. Yeah. But we know that it was long enough that she apparently became known for performing miracles huh. and eventually became worshipped by the locals as a saint. Wow. That's weird. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck to do with that little history fact, but I just thought this was fucking wild. I don't know. Well, <laughs> imagine imagine <laughs> if they were they built her like a hot tub. And then, oh, oh, don't worry about it. Oh, it's, guys, guys, it's getting a little hot. No, don't you worry your pretty little tasty head over it. Don't you worry your tasty tail over it. Guys, it's getting very hot in here. Why is Sean chopping up potatoes and putting yeah, it in the side? Taste, yeah. Margaret has carrots. What, what, are you, what, what are we doing here, guys? <laughs> like, Why are there shellfish and crabs in here, too? Stu, Stu, Stu. My name's not Stu, it's Mergin. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Sadly, I wasn't able to find any details of how long she lived there or what miracles she performed, but I imagine it was things like being able to hold her breath underwater for an extended period of time, not wearing a bra. Uh, I, don't, I don't know, like, what kind wearing of miracles she performed. Yeah. Wearing seashells sea that just randomly stay there. <laughs> yeah. Magic. Mm -hmm. Talking to a flounder. Talking to a flounder. So from heaven to the sea, we're now going into the earth. Kind of like the first story, this next tale has a strange degree of credibility, or at the very least, it has a long series of very weird receipts attached to it. Mm. In 1188, the Archdeacon of Brecon, Gerald of Wales, who had become known by many names I can't pronounce because they're in Welsh, was leading 3,000 troops through the Welsh countryside in an attempt to recruit more men in an effort to join a holy crusade which would, quote, free Jerusalem. We're going there right now. And while Gerald, <laughs> quoting a book, um, but while Gerald would eventually become known for his relationship with Wales as a whole, at the time, he was actually just an outsider who was quickly becoming enchanted by the region. Well, this also is connected a little bit more because you're talking about whales and a mermaid. Did you read ahead? No. <laughs> <laughs> Me either. <laughs> 
Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So as his journey progressed, he became more and more infatuated with Welch culture, right? Mm-hmm. Um, which this eventually soon led him the to grape start juice. documenting yeah. him. <laughs> <laughs> Welch's. Um, but yeah, so as he became more and more infatuated with Welch uh, culture, Inevitably, he started documenting everything he was learning, Yeah. right? So he was an archduke. He was educated. He knew how to write at the time because, you know, the churches controlled mm-hmm. everybody's ability to read and write. Um, so he was well-educated. He was documenting all this in his diaries. He was loving the culture. He was coming up with a great invention called mayonnaise that he just <laughs> later came up with. Brilliant. <laughs> it spreads on the bread. Yes, Now, these notes he took, they then went on to become a book, which to this day is considered one of the best peaks back in time to medieval Wales. Right. So part of the reason why I'm telling you this, it chronicled society, tradition, daily life. Like it was an actual like on the ground. This is what I'm seeing. This is how the locals act. These are their beliefs, their customs. Mm -hmm. They're all the shit like that, which at the time, again, the, the hierarchy of education kind of kept that just to the ruling class and basically was like, and there was a rebellion. But anyways, Francis wore this beautiful blah, blah, blah today. You know, like yeah. they ignored the actual majority of the population. This dude was like, this shit's fascinating. But yeah, so why did I tell you all that? Well, it's because it was in Gerald's notes that we find his recording of a conversation between himself and a local priest named Eldir. I'm 100% butchering that name, but if y'all saw the spelling, well, help me out. Well, the priest told Gerald that when he was around 12 years old, he ran away from home and hid in a dried up riverbank where he stayed and slept for two nights. On the third day, Aldir was approached by two small human looking beings, quote, no bigger than pygmies. They asked Aldir if he would come with them to where they live, saying, quote, where they live is all playtime and pleasure. Oh my god, I know where this is going for. <laughs> reading that, I was like, that's a way better pickup line than hey kids, want some candy? It's just like somebody came yep. up and they're like, hey, you could have recess 24 7 at my place. I'd be like, fuck my bag, I'm coming. You know, like I'm there. You know, yeah. As Geralt was walking closer, he just heard. <laughs> It was just bubbles dressed up as like yeah. a small person. Yes. Well, with their offer sounding slightly just better than being hungry, bored, and living in a ditch, Eldir accepted and began following them. But not through the woods or onto a spaceship, but down a long, dark tunnel deep into the earth. Huh. Now, it's going to get kookadooky here. This is a priest telling this story. Very trustworthy. Very trustworthy. Never done a thing wrong. Mm-hmm. Once they reached the end, Aldir stood in amazement as he gazed onto an entire world of plants and animals living below what looked like an always overcast sky. They continued on until finally Aldir was taken to their city where he was received by the royal court. Now, there is a whole tiny kingdom down there with a bunch of tiny, long-haired, pasty people Riding around on horses the size of greyhounds. <laughs> Apparently, too, uh, this was in the book, and this was in the, the notes and stuff about it. Um, none of them ate meat, but also none of them ate vegetables. They only drank flavored milk. What kind of flavors? Strawberry. Oh, it's only strawberry? <laughs> strawberry. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. They couldn't get anything else to grow, so. But, like, if you're 12, this is Almond dope as milk. fuck. This is yeah, dope oh, as yeah, fuck. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, you're looking around, you're like, looking at the king, I could take him. Yeah, I'd you're probably like, I'm the bitch. tallest person here, yeah. I'm gonna... You're lucky I'm excited to be here. You better keep I me love happy. Milk. I yeah. love milk. Mm-hmm. I'm good. I, I love milk. I love milk. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking start. So, as the story goes, Aldir moved in with them, eventually learning their language and basically just straight up started a new life. So this kid ran away spent two nights in a ditch, got taken into the hollow earth, met a bunch of, I don't know, earth elves, hollow earth elves, and then proceeded to just like be like, hey, this is where I'm at now. And just everything's okay. You want to know something this sounds like? This sounds like this kid had a lot of trauma that he just experienced those two days and he had to cover it up somehow. No, that... This... 
that wouldn't explain why he ran away. What are you talking about? I don't know. Just making an educated guess. Kind of like uh, kind of like Winnie the Pooh. You know, Christopher Robin goes out there in the forest. Mm-hmm. You know, the whole thing about that he's either a serial killer or he's been horribly abused and he just has imaginary friends. That whole thing. Mm. Yeah. Huh. Well, as time passed and Eldir would begin making trips back and forth from his new life down in the hollow earth with the earth elves, um, back to the surface world, eventually he started to miss his mom. I'm assuming it was his dad that was a piece of shit. Mm. And so he would go sneak away and go see his mom. Um, At first, these trips were chaperoned by the hollow earth elves, but eventually Eldir was allowed to go on his own. Again, like he was down there long enough, he learned their language. Huh. Right. So, like, he was down there a long time building up trust, living in the community. Oh, you know, yeah. Like, yeah. helping them flavor their milk. You know, he was in it. Right? Doing charitable organization stuff. You charitable know, reaching stuff on the top shelves. Why did we ever build them this high? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, on one of those trips, he slipped up, the one where he went alone, right? He slipped up <laughs> and he nice. told his mom how much gold there was down there. Now, here's the thing. There wasn't just a lot of gold, but there was so much gold, people down there were just using it for fucking everything. Just like every random fucking thing. It, it, yeah. was, as, it was as common as aluminum was before 2020. You know, like it was just like fucking everywhere, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Specifically, and this is a quote from, from the records of this, they used it for everything, including, quote, sports equipment, which... <laughs> what sports were they playing? <laughs> I don't fucking know. I'm like, I'm pretty sure the only sports they had in the like medieval times was extreme rock watching, burning witches, and digging potatoes. Like that's all I could think of. Yeah, I mean, I guess sword fighting. They could do like professional, like you know, like just jabbing each other with a rock with gold. I'm, no, I guess that'd be safe for kids to use. It's so soft. Well, yeah, because you know, if it's you know 18, 24 carat, it's not going to do anything. You know, that's true. Obviously, if it's only if it's only gold, it's not going to do much. I don't. Yeah, professional rock watching is probably top it's of like their list. There. You know, it's up there. You know, yeah, they damn sure didn't play pickleball. Yeah, you know? burning witches was like the Super Bowl every year. You know. Like that was yeah. just like, yeah, you're gonna be there February eighth, girl. Yeah. I wonder what kind of commercials they had during it. <laughs> hear ye, hear ye. If you don't, you need this medicine. Try out my new snake oil. Made from real snake. Grow three feet in two days. Five <laughs> percent real viper. <laughs> yeah. I mean they could have had them, they do burrow. That's true. So after slipping up and saying that, one thing led to another, and eventually his mom had begged him enough times to bring her some gold that he felt bad and he agreed. You know, again, <laughs> he's going to see his mom because, like, he misses her. You know, I really feel like, you know, the issues with his dad. He started a whole life, and she's like, yo, da 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 da. And he's like, ah, uh, the fuck. All right. And so gives in. He agrees to, to get some gold from down there. Uh <laughs> huh. I think I saw this episode of Gold Rush. Might have been last week. <laughs> now, this, to me at least, this is the part of the story where I start to suspect that Aldir might not be the brightest potato digger in the field. You know what I mean? Mm, I do. Catch Are they digging for potatoes now? <laughs> not quite. Not quite. Well, see, days later, after this this meeting with his mom, Aldir was playing with the tiny king's more tinier son. They were rolling. <laughs> Mini me. <laughs> it's just named Mini me. They were also this whole time I was, you know, it's around Christmas. I'm reading this and I'm like, maybe the elves had to go underground in order to avoid Santa's sleigh so they wouldn't get enslaved. This makes oh sense. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> this tracks. This fucking tracks. Well, Egypt. <laughs> so yeah, they're literally just like being kids. They're like rolling this gold ball back and forth. I don't know, it's dumb kid shit in the medieval ages. Again, yeah, yeah. this was considered an extreme sport, you know? Yeah. Well, Aldir, surrounded by nearly an unlimited supply of gold, decided that this ball is what he should take. Makes sense for a kid, for <laughs> so, sure. So he grabs it. It's like, they're still playing. He grabs it and makes a mad dash for his parents' house. He's in the hollow earth. I can make it. Nah. I mean, he is taller, apparently, than the other kids, so they yeah. wouldn't be able to catch him. Yeah, them. yeah, but, you know, I, and I do picture that. I picture the the little, you know, hippie earth elves, probably half of his size at this point, like, yeah. screaming at him as they chase him through tunnels. 
My ball, my ball. <laughs> get him, get him, he's got the ball, he's got the ball. Is this how football was created? <laughs> I think so. Yeah, yeah. I think this is an early form of soccer. Don't quote me on that, but uh. it makes sense. Well, this pursuit kept up until Eldir tried to bust through the front door like he was Kramer being chased by Frodo and Samwise. Like he just like got to his parents' house and he's like, <laughs> just like came in. Yeah. And, but he wasn't quite as smooth as Kramer or racist. See, when uh, he did this, uh-huh. he tripped, literally running through a dark tunnel this whole fucking time, didn't trip once. But when he went into his literal childhood home, fell on his ass. He fell straight forward. See, this is this is where I get to thinking it's unbelievable. Yeah. No, no, that was what got me. I'm like, I yeah. tripped in your own fucking doorway. I mean, I've ran into my own door, but I've never tripped on my own doorway. Yeah. Anyways, when he tripped, it was that dramatic moment where he dropped the ball, no, and it like fell out of his hands. Uh-huh. Right. He just ran from the center of the earth, out of a riverbed, through the woods, all the way to the parents' house. Never dropped a damn thing got to his own door and was like, fuck. And it was that moment. That's all that the little folks needed to grab it and immediately start leaving. Oh, so they were at his heels. You know, I, I didn't understand that. Yeah, they were nipping at his heels. Oh, yeah. No, they were there. They were literally double timing the whole time to keep up. Yeah. Yeah. As they left, and this is great, they looked over at him and they started spitting at him and calling him names. Wow. Basically, they were just like, you fucking asshole, fuck you. We literally took you to paradise, brought you in. Yeah. Right? Like, we weren't yeah. that creepy person just trying to get a little kid to do something. We gave you our flavored milk, bro. Our flavored milk. I mean, that's what you say. And they're probably just, okay, I don't even, it's, uh, yeah. I'm just saying they didn't actually do anything bad to him. That we know of. The way that this dude's telling the story, I'm pretty sure okay. he would tell us. Well, let's go by the way the story happens. Yeah, the way the That's story a, is told. I'm it's going true. on historical mm-hmm. records. I didn't say historical facts. I'm just saying historical, historical records. Historical records. Okay, yeah. <laughs> historical. This was historically recorded. So where his? So his? So let's say his parents were not home. So they would have seen him fall over the thing and see these little, you know, running in that. Yeah, trying to get all the like the little thing. You know, get the ball. And just yeah. like, you know, call him like stupid idiot, bastard, you know, asshole. Things spitting like that him. little spitting on him, you know, and he gets up and they're just, the, his parents go, what the happened? Dad had the one moment he could have redeemed himself and be like, you don't do that to my son. No, he, he probably, the dad was probably just looking at him and was just like, ah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. I'd do that to you if I could too. I knew he was out there getting into trouble. <laughs> <laughs> You're up to no good stealing stuff. You're going off to the crusades. <laughs> I wasn't home to raise you bad enough to make those decisions. Uh-huh. Well, now from there, from the moment where he fell, from where he got spit on, he got cussed out. Fast forward to Priest Aldir being old and is still friends with Gerald. Well, uh-huh. Aldir, who eventually, you know, in time, by the time I'm talking about when he got old, became a bishop by the end of his life. Still, even towards his final days, held on to every word of the story saying it was true when him and Gerald would talk or when other folks close to him would talk about this. Uh And so much so, and Gerald noted this over his entire life after he knew him, that every single time certain parts of the story came up, pretty much the parts that became pure regret, he would always start crying. Uh, He's fucked with them his whole life. Yeah, I mean, it seems like this is might be the first mention of a hollow earth. I don't know. That's a good one. That's a good point. Because, like, that might be the first mention of something that's under there, you know? Like, you know, nowadays yeah. it's mentioned everywhere where you see, you know, now King Kong's from Hollow Earth, you know? It's like all yeah. these little, you know, fictional things coming there. Everybody's down there trying to get, you know. These fucking elves, they'll just take anybody in. Yep. Adolf Hitler's in Hollow Earth, I've heard some theories say. It's just like, come on. They were like, are you sure you won't steal? He's like, do you look like Poland? <laughs> No, I won't. I won't, yeah. And I mean, you know, <laughs> maybe he took over later on. But I will run for office. <laughs> <laughs> it is the milk called Pooch. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> the milk is from the motherland. <laughs> we will only have schnitzel milk. <laughs> but yeah, again, fascinating little piece of history. Weird as fuck. It's also weird that, again, like it has receipts going back that far. A lot of times he's yeah. like really crazy, like, whoa, like... 
nutsy stories about this kind of stuff like it's like they're like oh actually somebody in you know 1890 wrote it about something that happened in 1500s but they wrote it as a piece of fiction but they tried to promote it as like non-fiction or to get publicity but that and then it get, eventually gets tracked down it's like oh that's debunked this is actually like there and it's also a book that historians legitimately reference for this time period in order to understand it. Yeah. There were so many notes. There were so many years. Like, we're, yeah. we're talking decades from when yeah. Gerald was, like, in his, more or less his youth, his fighting age, you know, until the ripe old age of 45 in the medieval ages. Like, yeah, yeah. For decades, <laughs> um, you know, he had notes and references to his conversations with Eldir yep. where these things came up and he obviously kept asking him, he's like, yo, so, so what else happened with that? And he would always say the same shit and it would always get recorded the same. And this all became part of historical text. That shit's wild. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. And I know that the kid kept asking what kind of milks they had and, and the kid yeah. was like, do you have macadamia? And they're like, no. They're like, do you have cashew? No. Do you have almond? And he's like, what do you think we are nuts? <laughs> we don't have drums down here, or else we would have gave you a. No, that's fine. We don't. We don't drum anymore. Yeah, we broke them. Probably, probably quit drumming on that subject. That joke. Yeah. Well, we went nuts, so we broke the drums. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Reverse joke. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <Boom>. Whoa. <laughs> Sounds more like a gun. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Ugh. Yeah. A gun is a reverse joke. Now, for our next strange tale, <laughs> <laughs> we'll be heading over to England in the year of 1204, specifically Orford, East Anglia. Local fishermen began to notice something was wrong as they attempted to lift their nets and bring in the day's catch. As they fought to bring the nets closer to the surface, they saw something large had been trapped, still unable to see it, tugging and tugging, trying to get this net over the edge of their boat. <laughs> well, as they pulled, not sure if it was a feast or a beast, they continued their fight until they were able to yank the net over the edge of the boat and slam its contents violently onto the deck. Looking back at them was an incredibly pissed off, completely naked man who, besides his head, was covered in hair and sporting a long, unkept beard. They just pulled some hairy dude out of the fucking water. They found Merfoot. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The Bigfoot of the Seas. <laughs> the Bigfoot of the Seas. And that's what they named him, the Bigfoot of the Seas. <laughs> well, after having no luck trying to get the naked Bigfoot merman to speak, uh, the mer the 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 burf man, um, uh, they, yep. de mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> they decided the best option was to wrestle him down and to haul him into town. Oh, God. And this is how <laughs> wrestling was invented. Are we just telling how sports were invented? I think so. I mean, yes. We're starting with rock watching, and now we're getting into like boat wrestling, which sounds like an extreme sport. It does, actually. Well, soon after getting to shore, this fur man merman uh -huh. found himself in Orford Castle, locked up as prisoner under the direct care of the castle's custodian, Bartholomew de Gladville. I just literally imagine a guy with a mop and bucket just going around <laughs> just being like, yep. Got another Murfer man in here. Hey, custodian used to be a thing of royalty. Used to oh, be for sure. It's the person the who looks after class. the castle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just when, when us peasants rebelled, we were so jealous of custodians that we degraded them in society. But no, but shout out custodians, y'all. Y'all kick an ass. Now, Bartholomew, known for his hospitality, just like the Irish, fed the fur man whole raw fish, which apparently Bartholomew and the guards then watched as he would pick up and, quote, squeeze the water out of and drink. It's smart, I guess. I, I somehow imagine they also gave him water. But the sushi, it did come at a cost. In almost no time, Bartholomew lost his temper with this fur man after he, too, failed to get him to speak anything but, quote, grunts and strange noises. Now, in response, Bartholomew had the fur man hung upside down by his ankles and tortured Hmm, that's horrible. I also really want to know what the fuck they did to torture this, like, fur man merman dude. Like, they're just, like, showing him pictures of sand and, like, movie theater popcorn, and then just like... Yeah. That's true. I don't like this. Uh, just tickle his little feet. Alas, even their most enhanced forms of medieval interrogation didn't work. And I just see Bartholomew there just like, Blast! I was sure waterboarding would work that time. I'm sure they used it all the time, too. 
Well, actually, their next step was drive boarding. <laughs> drive boarding. <laughs> um, so their next step, though, it was God. Just like God? in our first God. Yeah, oh, they, okay, yeah. They took the fur man to a service at the Orford Church, later saying something to the tune of, quote, it was obvious the creature had never been to a church service before. I mean, obviously. <laughs> Probably hadn't been on land before. There's a lot of things. Look, he you caught him. He was pissed. He wanted to leave. I bet you, oh my God, what if he fell out of the Itzirobune oh, and his yeah. wife was the one in the coming off because she came from, because he has red hair. <laughs> We're getting yeah. a divorce. Yeah, he just <laughs> threw him Damn out it. and then <laughs> she wound it up in the Japanese shore and he wound it up on the Irish shore. The, uh, the English shore, sorry. Sorry, Ireland. The tracks. That tracks. Yep. If you get a Different time shore. machine and um, once every thousand year currents, could it be Atlantis? It all connects. <laughs> These things all connect. Well, after a very awkward church service, again, picture this. It's like 1100 something and everybody's in church because that's what you were legally mandated to do. Uh-huh. Um, everybody's at service and there's just a fucking like fur man, merman sitting there just being like... <laughs> Just like looking around, confused. Scared, like, yeah. Shh, he's speaking. He's just like trying to tell them, like, yeah. I can't breathe. Like, yeah, like, I don't know where I'm doing it. What am I doing here? <laughs> Literally, why is everybody silent? Why is everybody uh-huh. chanting? Like, why do they keep talking about the blood of some guy? <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> they're drinking like, the blood of some guy and they're eating like, him. He's watching all the choir boys and shit like that, like holding candles. Like, shit, they have a fence made of fire. <laughs> Yeah, they're going to burn me. <laughs> he sees, like, the tridents. The trident. Oh, my God. He sees the trident of, like, because the candle usually is There's in There's a three. guy nailed looking, on a cross in the yeah. back, and he's like, the guy up front must be threatening everyone else that he'll do to them what they did. Yeah, because they're freaking drinking blood in there. And I know. The body it's like of my blood I was eating, weird. Eating his body. Jeez, these and people are flesh. cannibals. Thinking and they're going to burn him alive. I would be a little freaked out. I mean, again, mm-hmm. these people just grabbed you with a net yelled at you in a language you probably don't fucking understand. Also, biologically, you might not be able to speak. Yep. Well, after God wasn't a success, days would pass, and Bartholomew, never one to quit, was ready to carry out his next plan. Uh-huh. He. This was medieval time, so they went well, bad cop, good cop. What's the opposite of God? A dog. We're getting him a dog. <laughs> getting him a dog. I brown dog is gonna his name's gonna be Chocolate. <laughs> we haven't discovered that yet, but someday. Now Yes. Well, like I said, so days would pass, Bartholomew, never one to quit, would uh-huh. then carry out his next plan, going from bad cop to good cop, basically. And after getting all the local fishermen to meticulously block off a section of the town's river, essentially creating a water jail. Uh-huh. He brought Furman down to the river and let him swim for a while. That was the intention. What actually happened was almost immediately Furman swam under the nets and out into the open water, then took off down the river, doing little dolphin jumps in the water and celebrate. Good, they let him free. <laughs> no, they didn't want him to get free. They tried to nah. they put up nets like a, a underwater jail. Yeah, they tried to hold him. And he's like, Y'all realize they could just lift this at the bottom, right? He just fucking woo just like took off and then he popped up and he's like, ha 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 And then somewhere in the in the like river insides there was a kid standing up looking up and then Furman Merman just jumped over top of him. Yeah, yeah. Willie. Well, this is where it gets even better after the little jumps. He was then seen for hours just swimming around the river looking at everybody and mean mugging everyone. Good. They deserve that. He was just like out there in the water like, Oi! Bartholomew! Hey! Hey, yeah! You, you fucking walker! Sir, I believe yeah, yeah, you just called you a, a, a wanker. What the devil is a wanker? No, I quite think you're mistaken. You, in fact, are the wanker. Very sick what? monster. Very the sick. The fuck's a wanker? I called you a walker. Sir, it appears he's now trying to signal something with, with just the middles of his fingers. Seems as though he's waving goodbye. Couldn't stand my sick comeback. High five. <laughs> Fire, sir. I do believe that was lit. <laughs> no, but I had no clue how many cases there were in history of towns and times and people claiming 
that they didn't just see one up on a rock or some shit, but actually, like, grabbed the motherfucker, brought it into town, like, had time to try to baptize it, yeah. building a pool for it. There's a shit ton of stories with, like, mermaids and sirens where it's, like, it's not just a, a brief sighting. Yeah. The whole town's got them, and they're all like, what should we name it? You know? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess, yeah, <laughs> there was so much, you know, stuff going on that they eventually just made an animated documentary, Disney did, and called yeah. it The Little Mermaid, you know? What was, was it Neptune was her dad? Because that kind of sounds like this dude. I think Neptune. And, you know, obviously Disney had to make it more sexy, so they gave, they gave him a shaved chest, but, like, big scraggly beard. King, King, Tri- King, King Triton. Mm, King Triton. They probably had to change his name for legal reasons. Yeah, yeah. probably. Mm-hmm. But anyways, <laughs> I hope y'all are asleep by now, or chilling, or just having a good fucking day and enjoying hearing about random little bits of history that frankly are just um, too much of our weird little heritage to throw away. They've been with us for over thousands of years. Mm -hmm. Not because they're good, but just because maybe they happened. Y'all are great. Seriously, seriously hope that um, whatever holidays you are avoiding or celebrating or just tolerating, um, you manage to find moments of joy with the people human and non-human that you love and the memories that bring you happiness and y'all stay safe. Enjoy your Kwanzaa Christmas Festivus. Um, Fermanica. Fermanica, yeah. yeah. Holidays. See y'all next week, everybody. <laughs> Bye. Bye. All playtime and pleasure and pleasure and pleasure and pleasure and wabberry. <laughs> wabberry. <laughs>